If you've started learning 3D animation in programs like Maya or Blender, then you've probably heard the term tangents once or twice before. If we look at our animation curves in the graph editor, tangents are the entrance and exit points on either side of a key. If you're new here, hi, my name is Skitty and I'm a 3D animator. Today, we're going to learn all about the different types of tangents and how to use them. This tutorial will be using Maya version 2022, but the principles will apply across other programs. And with that, Let's get started. As I mentioned, tangents are the entrance and exit points of your animation curve on a key. If we select our key, we can see how our tangents are being interpreted with these bars that appear. These are known as tangent handles. These handles can be selected and moved by left clicking to highlight it, then holding middle mouse click to move it. The tangent handles will rotate around the key, changing how the curve interacts with it. Maya has seven types of tangents, which we will go over, but before we do, I just want to clarify that these types are more like presets than types. Sometimes you can get away with using these tangents at their default, but other times they will need to be treated as a starting point and manually tweaked after. Most of these tangent types can be created manually, not that we'd ever want to take the time to do that. So instead of viewing these as the seven types of tangents, think of them more as seven customizable defaults. The first tangent type is auto tangent. By default, anytime you set a key, it will be an auto tangent. If we grab a key with auto tangents and move it up and down, notice how the tangent handles rotate? Maya recalculates the tangents as we move the key to try to keep the transition with the keys on either side of it as smooth as possible. If we were to move the key to line it up with the key beside it, auto will flatten the tangent to line up with it while maintaining the ease on the other side. The issue with auto tangents is when we set a new key in the middle of a transition. I'm going to hit the S key on my keyboard to set a new key right in the middle. Did you see the curve change? Auto wants to keep some easing on either side of its key, even if the surrounding keys would have made a smooth transition without it. We would have to grab the tangent handles and line it back up ourselves. The other way to avoid this is to set our key in a different way. When we hit S on our keyboard, we're telling Maya to set a new key. But if we were to tell Maya to insert a key rather than set a new key, our curves wouldn't change at all because it's like putting a pin in the information that's already there. We can insert keys by activating the insert key keys tool up here and clicking anywhere on our curve, or we can just hold down the I key on our keyboard, which keeps the insert tool active until we let go of I. If you're using Maya 2022, you'll notice in your graph editor we actually have four different types of auto tangents. This is new to this version of Maya. The first one here, Auto Tangents Legacy, is the standard auto we're used to from older versions. Beside that, we have Auto Tangent Ease, which is more heavily influenced by the adjacent keys. Then we have Auto Tangents Mix, which calculates linearly, giving you a more straight down the middle result. Then we have Auto Tangents Custom. This tangent is something we need to set up ourselves by going to the Tangents menu in the graph editor, hovering over Auto, and clicking the option box next to Auto Custom. Now we have a pop-out window with a single slider called Custom Coefficient. The lower the number is on the slider, or the further we pull it to the left, the more influence neighboring keys will have on the auto tangents curves. The higher the number, or further we pull the slider to the right, the less influence neighboring keys will have. Zero, which is in the middle of the slider, is equivalent to auto tangents mix. I find these four different auto buttons have very little difference between them, but they're worth playing around with regardless. Our next tangent type is spline tangents. Spline tangents are Maya's attempt at creating the smoothest possible transition by putting an ease on everything. There are a lot of instances where we can hit spline tangents and not have to think about it any harder, but other times that smoothness comes at a price. Remember how when we moved auto tangents, the handles rotated to recalculate? Spline tangents don't do that. Because of this, if we have a spline tangent which moves into a static curve, that tangent is going to create an unintentional overshoot to try to give that curve a smoother arc. The best way to use spline tangents is when you want really fluid movements with a minimum amount of keys. The more keys you add, the more opportunities Maya has to add unintentional overshoots. Our next tangent type is called clamped tangents. 
These function like a blend between linear and spline tangents. On a regular curve, clamped tangents act just like spline tangents. The difference comes in when you move the clamped tangents key closer to its neighboring key's value. If we pull this clamped key down to match the value of the key beside it, it goes flat. The tangent switches from acting like a spline tangent to acting like a linear one to prevent the overshooting that happens with spline. If you've ever used a literal clamp to hold something in place, it's a pretty accurate way to go about thinking about it. If we push the clamped tangent past the neighbor's key value, the spline curve comes back. We have a bit of a gradient as well where the spline turns into linear. Now that I've mentioned it a few times, let's talk about linear tangents. Linear tangents eliminate all easing, creating a very flat point A to point B transition. The linear key is the intersection point if you were to draw a straight line from the keys on the left and the right of it. This is used for things that need a constant state of motion, like the body control of a walk cycle. Our next tangent is called flat tangents. Flat tangents force the handles to stay completely horizontal no matter where they land on the curve. So if we set a key mid-transition to flat tangents, we can see it creates a bit of a shelf, forcing an ease in and out on the key. We can of course rotate this handle to smooth that back out, but at that point it's easier to just use another tangent type. The best place to use flat tangents is on the apex of the bounce on a bouncing ball. Flat tangents gives us a gradual ease in and out that extend on both sides of the key, which is what we need for a bouncing ball or anything else that resembles that formula. Side tangent, pun intended. That bouncing ball exercise will be reflected in your work for your entire career. That formula is reflected everywhere. So don't treat it like a one and done assignment. Go back to it as often as you need to. Next, we have a type called stepped tangents. This tangent is an entire workflow choice. It holds a key's position at 100% until the next key and then pops into position. The only information that's present is the poses that you set. I don't know if this is intentional, but the name stepped makes sense since it makes your keys look like stairs. It gives a bit of a stop motion style to your animation. This workflow is really useful if you're transitioning from 2D to 3D because it mimics flipping between your drawings. Typically when using stepped tangents, it's only used temporarily with intent to switch tangent types after the blocking phase is done and cleaned up in the polish phase. This workflow is good for when you want complete control of your motion without any help from Maya, but it does require a lot of extra work when switching from step to spline in the polish phase, so this workflow isn't for everyone. If you use the stepped tangent workflow and it works for you, that's great. I'm happy for you. But there are no right or wrong ways to animate, so don't feel bad if it's not for you. If this workflow isn't for you, there is still one use for it though. If you have multiple shots within the same scene, we can put keys on our camera in stepped to easily add our camera cuts. Our last tangent is called plateau tangents. Plateau acts similar to clamped, but they're a bit easier to work with. They act like spline tangents when the values vary a good amount, but when you start moving the key towards the value of the neighboring key, the tangents start to flatten earlier than clamped would, making the transition between keys a bit smoother. The thing that makes plateau tangents stand out over spline tangents is that in spline tangents, the smoothness of the arc takes priority over everything else, which, as we mentioned earlier, can sometimes result in an unwanted overshoot leading into the next key. Plateau, on the other hand, prioritizes ensuring that the keys you set are the maximum possible value. It's still aiming for the smoothest possible transition, but with the added rule set of the maximum values. This makes plateau tangents my go-to for things like moving holds. It gives the hold a smooth arc, and we don't have to worry about the values extending past the final position and then bouncing back like noodle soup. Not literal noodle soup. That's just how your animation is going to feel if your holds wobble around like that. That's it for the types of tangents, but there's a few things that you should still know before we end the video. First, let's talk about how to change the default tangent type. Then we will go over breaking and waiting tangents. If you don't know what that means, stick around to find out. So every time we set a new key, Maya defaults them to auto tangents, which we can then change manually. But if you hate auto and would rather spline, or if you work in the stepped tangent workflow, you'll want to change the default to save the hassle. To do that, go up to the Windows tab, hover over Settings Preferences, and select Preferences. In the Preferences menu that pops up, 
click on the animation tab from the list on the left. In here, we have options for both the default in and the default out tangents. Select which one you want in both boxes and hit save. There's two separate boxes for in and out tangents because we aren't limited to one type per key. It actually works on a per tangent basis. Which leads to our next topic, which is breaking tangents. So if we select our in tangent and set it to one type, then select our out tangent and set it to a different type, our key will act as intended with two separate types. But if we were to select a handle to try to adjust it, the handle will still move on both sides as if they're connected, since they are. If you look up at the shelf on your graph editor, chances are this button here will be highlighted. This is called Unify Tangents. It's the reason why moving one handle brings the other with it. To get individual control for our tangents, we can select the tangent we want and hit the button beside Unify called Break Tangents. Now if we just select one tangent, we can middle mouse drag and have it move independently. One thing to be aware of if you're moving around broken tangents, if you click the unify button to connect your tangents again, it will unify them in the position you move them to, so it doesn't act as a reset switch. You would have to move the tangents back manually before clicking unify, or click one of the tangent type preset buttons to reset the position. The last thing we're going to go over today is weighted and non-weighted tangents. By default, tangents are placed as non-weighted. Non-weighted is the easier of the two because it means that the handles for every tangent will default to the same length. The length of the handle determines how much influence it has over the curve, which is referred to as the tangent's weight. To change your keys to have weighted tangents, go up to the Curves tab in the Graph Editor and select Weighted Tangents at the bottom. This changes the type for all of your keys, so you can't just select a few to change those. What we can do now is make sure this Free Tangent Length button is highlighted, or Free Tangent Weight if you're on an older version of Maya, and try middle mouse moving your tangents now. See how pulling the handle longer increases the influence on the curve? You will still need to break your tangent if you want to change the length of individual sides though. If you get the weight where you're happy and are worried about bumping it, we can click the Lock Tangent Length button to lock it while still allowing us to move it around. Free Tangent Length only works on weighted tangents since we're kind of adjusting the weight, so keep that in mind if your tangents are non-weighted and Maya gives you an error. If you decide you love weighted tangents and want them as default, go back to your Curves menu in the Graph Editor, hover over Default Tangent Weight, and click Weighted Tangents. So, are we all tangent pros yet? It's hard to fully understand these things without putting them into practice yourself, so don't be shy, play around with all of them, and who cares if you make a mess of a scene, that's how we learn. Leave a comment below if there's something you didn't understand, like and subscribe if you learned something, links to socials are in the description, and remember to always use a reference.